thank you so much for joining us today as well. It's a new workshop from uh, our program. My name is Marinella. I'm a visual artist and today we are going to learn how to draw and paint a violin. I hope you'll enjoy the today lesson. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have connections with music. It will be a nice display in your house. I'm imagining friends, if they'll come over and visit you guys, it will be nice to to have uh, this kind of artwork to show to them what uh, you have done. So uh, for today we will need, I have here a watercolor uh, paper. It is a slightly thick paper. Um, otherwise you can use a normal one, but be very careful because uh, it shouldn't absorb too much the water. Uh, we will need uh, pencils, rubber, watercolors, sorry, acrylics, <laughs> acrylics, tubes, uh, or yeah, the set of tubes or um, big tubes, anything that is written acrylics. Um, Yes, thank you so much, Lisa. So yes, everyone, if you can pin the video, it will be easy to follow, yes, without uh, interruptions. So just to remind you once again, everyone, you can just message me in the chat and uh, I'll try to reply to everyone. Uh, the brushes, so I have here um, a flat big brush, uh, two other flat brushes, uh, one is number six, uh, 12, one is number four, and the round brush, number six. Yeah, ideal, you know, but obviously you can have your own set and just to have different, if you have different numbers on your brushes is fine, just to get, you know, similar to these uh, sizes. Yeah, okay, so let's start uh, our project. Brilliant. Yeah, so I have my paper. It is A3. You can have it A4, however you feel comfortable with the size. I know many people, they like to draw work on a small size. Others, they like to draw on a large size. Um, and we are going to use this horizontal uh, landscape, uh, yeah? Uh, we're going to arrange it in a landscape, our uh, uh, paper. Brilliant. So if you have canvas as well, it is even much better. So we're going to start, first of all, to position our violin. Yeah, so the violin is going to be like across, yeah, in a diagonal. We're going to do a diagonal line in the middle of our uh, page. And this will reflect the middle of the violin as well. Yeah. So, yeah, from this side of the paper, I'm just going to draw a line, a little bit inclined, yeah? So not a sharp diagonal, just, you know, slightly inclined. I just think it's too much inclined. Yeah. Don't worry if it's, your line is not straight. Um, it just needs to reflect, you know, the position of the violin. Yeah. Um, so as I mentioned, the number of the brushes is not uh, the exact one, because I know each set has different numbers. So I have a flat brush, quite big size. I have two um, medium flat, a number 12 and a number four. And I have a round one, number six. Yeah. If you have as well some sponges will be ideal. If not, no worries, we're just going to use the big brush. Yeah, so 
an inclined line yeah, for the position of the violin on our paper. Okay, we're gonna start drawing now the main body of the violin. So from this point, the lower point of this line, I'm going to start drawing a circle, uh, just to be more specific of the size. I think, yeah, the exact shape of your hand, yeah, for the circle. In order to make a perfect circle, if someone is struggling with this, so how I'm doing, very lightly, I'm doing several lines. So I'm just moving my hand, you know, in a round, round, round position over the paper. You know, I'm making several lines until I reach to the shape that I want. Once I'm feeling I'm there, the shape is getting there, I start pressing the pencil a little bit more so I can define my shape. Yeah? So it's like, it's like the same as riding a bicycle. It's difficult at the beginning, but once you get it, it's, it's just, you know, it's by itself. So just without fear, move your hand on your paper until you get, you know, a nice round circle. Yeah. Be very careful that this line has to be go exactly in the middle of the circle, yeah. So the line that you've done, the first one has to go exactly in the middle of the circle. We're going to carry on a little bit further on our line and I'm going to draw another circle overlapping this one and slightly smaller. So we need to get a smaller circle overlapping the first one. Yeah, so the same, I'm working on my hand on the paper until I get that round shape, the perfect circle. Obviously, we're going to rub out the lines that you don't need, but when you start at the beginning of drawing, it is good to use all the possible tools to reach to a perfect drawing. Okay, the next step, we're going to join the two circles, yeah, with a line, a little bit um, inclined down, yeah, so I'm going to join now the two circles, the line is not straight, it's a little bit curvy inside, yeah, so in the inside curve, yeah, for this, yeah. So look how easy it was to do the main body of the violin. Obviously now we're going to add the details and... Um, yeah. Those two lines that they join the circles, so we know that the shape of the violin, it has like a cut. Yeah, so it's like a, a more sharp, uh, a wavy line in there. Yeah, so if you can follow my pattern, yeah, what I'm doing. So one on the side, and then another one on the other side of the violin. Try your best to have them symmetrical. So try the same how it's on this side, the same one should be on the other side, yeah? 
And at this point, I'm ready to start rubbing out the lines that you don't need. Yeah. So just rub out the lines. Yeah. You see how nice and easy? This was actually the most difficult part of uh, drawing a violin. Yeah, so we already have the shape there. Gonna rub out those two lines, yeah, the middle of the violin. Brilliant. I want to work now on the thickness of the violin. So on this side, the bottom side is going to show the thickness of the violin. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy yeah, the same line. Um, so I can show the thickness. Yeah, only on the bottom side. The thickness of the violin. Brilliant. I'm not going to rub out this line, the middle one, because this is going to help us to build the other parts, the rest of the parts of the violin. So I'm going to start here. Uh, I think this part is called a uh, tail, the tail piece. Yeah. So, yeah, following this line, yeah, I'm going to start building the tail of the, the tail piece of the violin. Yeah? In between these two uh, lines, there is a small part of wood. I, I think it's called the bridge. So I'm gonna make the bridge just like a, a long rectangle. Yeah, the same try to make sure is in the middle of this line. Yeah, so that means is in the middle of the violin. Yeah, the bridge. If you know that there, uh, so there are some cuts into the violin, um, uh, there are some holes into the violin, a very nice uh, shape. So um, there are uh, nice curvy lines, nice patterns there. Yeah, so something like this, and the same size, the same shape. We have to do it symmetrical on. The other side.
try my best to get the perfect symmetry. Yeah. So I hope so far so good. Yeah. It's not a difficult uh, process, quite easy. Now I'm going to carry on uh, drawing the neck of the violin. So the neck is the part of wood that it holds the uh, string, the strings. So it's going to start from here, yeah, yeah, from the space in between these two cuts into the wood, yeah. So I'm going to start from here, yeah. Uh, the same as uh, 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 shape of a rectangle that is getting slightly smaller uh to the to the edge yeah so the rectangle is getting slightly yeah, smaller to the edge yeah if you can't get the perfect straight line as i mentioned with the circle try to make many lines yeah try to practice maybe with a very quick stroke, pencil stroke over your paper, yeah? If you can do your, um, uh, practice your lines, your straight lines. And do, try to make many lines until you reach to the one that you are happy with. And then um, you can press more the pencil to make it darker. Yeah? So in our mind, this line, the first one that we've done, it, we have to build the entire shape of the violin following this line, yeah? Okay, gonna rub out the extra lines. Don't need them now. So you can move your paper around, yeah, it depends how you feel comfortable to make the lines, yeah, so don't worry, it doesn't have to be straight on the, um, fixed on the table. Yeah. Now we need to finish off the shape of the uh, violin. So we have, oh, sorry, um, this part has to be a 3D shape. So I'm going to make the thickness of this one as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting more of this. Yeah. So I need to reflect the 3D shape. So always. Yeah, we need to draw the thickness as well. Okay, gonna carry on. Uh, so we have another extension here at the end of the violin. We have the uh, the tuning tuning pegs here, and I think the the scroll here. This is yeah a swirly line. A uh, shape of uh, a shell, yeah, and uh, it has a thickness, so we need to reflect the thickness as well, yeah. So first of all, I've done the main shape, and then I'm going to do the uh, tuning uh, uh, pegs, yeah. I'm gonna rub out the lines, yeah, because I don't want to get too confusing in here. The lines that you don't need. Yeah. And now I'm going to draw the pegs. Yeah. Two on a side, two on the other side. Yeah. 
So because it's in perspective from the other side of the violin, we're not gonna see the entire peg, we're gonna see just the head. Yeah, so just two circles here. And then gonna rub out the same, the lines that we don't need. Yeah. And just how easy we finished in 20 minutes drawing a violin. Obviously, if you're really not feeling comfortable with straight line, you can use a ruler. Um, I was trying to encourage people, don't use ruler because it's good to practice, uh, you know, your steady hand, straight lines. Um, the ruler is mostly used by architects, you know, architectural problem, uh, uh, architectural drawings. So um, for us artists, it's good to explore more the freedom of your hand. Yeah. Okay. Now we need to draw the strings. Four strings. Yeah, on the violin. So we're gonna start from the tail, yeah, of the violin. Going, the strings are going with uh, wider here on the bridge. So the distance between the string is gonna be bigger here, yeah. So let's mark on the bridge four lines. Okay. On the uh, tail, four points with a smaller distance between them. Yeah, and then we are going to join these ones. And uh, and here on the uh, end part of the uh, violin, the same four dots. The distance between these ones here yeah, is very, very small. Yeah, so now I'm just going to join the lines. So starting from the tail to the bridge, and then to the end piece of the violin. If you're not feeling comfortable now, you really can use a ruler, don't worry about it, yeah? So just joining the dots. The long ones might be slightly difficult to make them perfectly straight. When I was younger, I used to have even more steady hand, but now because of too much coffee. <laughs> it's considered that coffee makes your hands a little bit shaking in time. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I used to have even more steady hand. So I used to make, um, when I used to make projects painting on the walls, I used to draw lines from the top of the ceiling up to the um, floor. Brilliant. We have a nice violin. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the drawing. Now for the background, uh, we have those musical notes and the uh, lines. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to do, paint the background. And then after the session, when the colors will dry completely, um, make those lines with a marker and ruler and the same you can make with the marker the musical notes because they are too tiny and it will be difficult to make them from a brush yeah so now we'll just focus on painting and then after the class is finished the workshop you can do the um, musical notes from the background yeah Try to have something under, like a piece of uh, newspaper under your uh, work because it's gonna get messy. We're gonna work on the sides of the paper. Yeah, we're gonna apply color there. So it's gonna touch the table. Okay. So with my big brush or a sponge, I'm gonna show you on both how to use them. 
I'm gonna start applying by dabbing the color. First of all, a red, then a orange, and at the bottom, a blue, and then a lighter blue, yeah? So my first step, I'm going to add red. And then I'm going to add orange. And then blue. want to make my orange slightly lighter so I'm going to add a little bit yellow yeah just close to my orange first thing I'm going to uh, dab the brush yeah, in the water so it has to be properly wet and with uh, yeah, the same, quite a good amount of water on your uh, brush. Try to take a little bit from your color, we're starting with red, and try to mix it until it's getting very watery. Yeah, we need a proper ink consistency in there. So I'm using the biggest brush here yeah, that I took you guys. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to dab onto my um, paper or canvas. Yeah, just dab, dab, dab and leave gaps in between your dabbing. Yeah. So dab, 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 only on the top part of your paper. Insist more on the side of the paper, the top side. And now clean the brush. You have a tissue as well, but use the water first. And then, because I don't want this ones to have, you know, massive gap in between them, I want to merge the colors one into each other. So I'm gonna apply just water on top. Yeah, just water. So I'm gonna blend those brush strokes one into each other. Yeah. Why I'm doing this is because I want a vibrant background, uh, the feeling of the waves of the music. Yeah, I don't want something pure, you know, just the, the vibrancy of the music. And then the violin will be painting nicely, shiny and all this. But the background I want quite strongly, you know, um, to reflect a, a, a feeling similar to music yeah okay the next one i'm going to move towards the uh, orange so mixing with yellow so and a very light orange yeah and the same water use water to have a very uh, runny consistency similar to ink Yeah, then I'm going to carry on with the second round of uh, dabbing. Don't go over the, the violin, uh, very careful, go up to the sides, yeah, the violin, don't go over. I'm just going to take a little bit from the yeah. orange to blend into the uh, red. Yeah, to 
it's too strong. I'm gonna clean the brush. Yeah. Make sure that all the color is removed from the brush. And while the brush is still wet, yeah, the same, I'm gonna apply a layer of water over the paint. If you'd have a canvas, it would be even more amazing. Probably would, have, would look even much better. So if you have a sponge, you can use this with a sponge. It will uh, look even much better with a sponge. OK, so I'm going to move now towards the bottom of the page on the uh, blue shade. So the same, I'm going to take the blue, mix it with the water. ink consistency and I'm gonna start my dabbing. Insist on the sides of the paper. Don't go over the, sh the shape of the canvas. Oh, sorry, the, sh the shape of the violin. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit more water. Yeah, I'm going to add more water in the mixture that I've done it previously. So I'm going to create a lighter shade of this uh, blue. Yeah, just slightly lighter. With the same color. Yeah, and go up to the violin. I'm going to clean the brush properly. And while there is still some water on the brush, yeah, I'm just going to apply a layer of water. Yeah. Over my blue color. brilliant. I'm going to take the um, uh, number 12 flat brush and I'm going to make like a frame of my artwork with a black color. So I'm just going to put some more black. Yeah. So black, the same mixing with water firstly. So what I'm going to do, let me, let me start from the top here. So I'm going to make uh, like a frame of the ca uh, the canvas. It, it's going to give a, a type of uh, vintage feeling as well. So I'm going to apply the brush strokes in um, uh, X or in a cross type of uh, directions. So first on direction, then on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a cross type of uh, strokes. Yeah. Don't make them too sharp. Just try slightly to make them blending into the color. Yeah. 
So this painting, if it's done on a canvas, it will look literally amazing on a wall displayed. Um, once again, if you have a canvas, if you are doing this uh, uh, black uh, uh, marks, so when you have a canvas, you need to paint the side of the canvas, so the thickness of the canvas, it has to be painted as well with uh, black. Yeah, don't leave it white because if you'll display it on the wall, it's not going to look nice. So black here on front and white on the side. So try to paint that on as well with um, black. Yeah. Oh, me. So I start here from the sides and go uh, from to, towards the middle of the face. From the sides, yeah. So I make sure that the sides of the canvas are properly covered. So this gives a nice frame, a vintage type. Um, instead of black, if you want, you can use a brown, a dark brown or a red mixed with brown looks you know, more, um, gives even more feeling of this vintage. Please share with us your artworks. I've seen uh, some of you guys, this, you sent me the uh, project from la previous uh, workshops. Thank you so much. It turned out so nice. I I'm really happy you guys are uh, enjoying our workshops. I think, you know, it's a good learning and entertaining. Uh, so yeah, please share with us these ones. Email us or share on the uh, social media. It is uh, really fun. You might have an uh, online gallery, so tag us as well. Yeah. So we have a vibrant background. This is what we need. Strong, colorful, yeah. So now we're going to move towards the violin. I'm going to use the same black for the dark parts of the violin. Uh, and I'm going to change with the round brush number six. So I'm gonna start uh, drawing, yeah, the the round cut into the, yeah, to the violin. So just pure black, yeah, this one's. This width, the thickness of uh, the neck of the violin, the same as black. The tail. <laughs> Sounds uh, funny, but yeah, it's the tail of the violin. Same black. Yeah. 
So I'm gonna uh, work now towards the uh, main uh, body of the violin. I think the uh, the pegs are so they're black. The strings are also black, but this ones will be done after uh, the artwork is finished. So you can use a ruler and a marker. The same, the ruler and the marker, you can do the lines. So they, um, for the uh, musical notes, I think they're used five lines and then, yeah. So make one row, five lines, another one. So probably four rows of this five lines and then you can draw some uh, musical lines on top with the marker. It will look really nice for the background, the strings as well, after the painting is dry. We're gonna work now on the main body of the violin. Uh, so I'm going to use a brown. because we will need different shades of this brown, uh, like a darker brown, lighter brown. I'm going to add even a little bit more black. Now I'm going to, what I'm going to paint is the thickness, the width of the violin, and I'm going to use my flat brush number four. Okay. This is a shadow part yeah, of the violin. So it's going to be done with brown. I'm gonna take a little bit from the brown and mix it with black. Yeah. So I'm gonna get a dark brown. Um, try to mix properly the colors. It takes a few seconds, you know, to, to get a good mix. You might see that maybe it's getting too dark and you don't want that dark. Maybe you want a little bit lighter. So add a little bit more brown, yeah? So by mixing, mixing, you'll reach actually to the right shade that you want, yeah? So this dark brown, I'm gonna make the sides of the violin. It's looking in the camera extremely dark. <laughs> it's not that dark. <laughs> Let me bring it more closer. Yeah, so it's, uh, if you see the reflections, is actually, yeah, a type of brown. But from distance, I think it looks like a shade of black. So use the same color. So I've done the darkest uh, part of the violin. Oh. By mistake, I dropped some more. Uh... 
Okay. Now I'm going, we are going to work on the main body of the violin. I'm going to get back to my uh, medium flat brush, number four, uh, 12. And I'm going to use the brown by itself. However, I want to have different shades in there because there will be different reflections, shadows. So I'm going to add a little bit um, orange, yeah, just to give a little bit different shades. Yeah. So I have a nice um, brown mix of orange. From time to time, I'm going to add the sort of different shades in this color. So you can change it. You don't have to have the same color uh, all, all over. So for example, I'm going to add just a shade of a little bit more red now. Yeah. So you see, because we have a flat brush uh, and quite large, how easy we cover our surface. Very, very easy. So the pointy brushes are more for details, uh, for straight lines, but to cover large areas, you need a flat brush. You can go over the strings yeah, just make sure that you can still see the strings, yeah, the drawing. So when you are going to go over the marker, you see the lines. Yeah? So you see, continuously I'm changing the shades, I'm not keeping the same one, because the violin uh, surface is very shiny, and uh, whatever is shiny, it has many reflections and reflections bearing different colors. So we need to play around with this. Don't have make it just proper dull, a dull uh, brown. Okay, almost finished. That quick. I hope you guys are uh, the same uh, stage. Okay, I just want to show you, I'm going to add a little bit white and I'm going to mix it with the brown. So I have some uh, sharp lights in there. Yeah, so just on top of this. Oh, it's not so strong. It depends also the quality of the uh, paints. I'm going to use as well some yellow. So I'm mixing white with some yellow. Let's see. Yeah. So I think you can see a little bit reflections of light. Yeah. Can go across the edge of the violin, yeah. the other side as well. Yeah. Obviously, to add more artistic touch, you can add more and more shades, play around with colors. Is uh, literally you can spend the entire day uh, you know yeah so just randomly i've done some shades of light let me have a little bit more shadows as well so i'm gonna add more brown because i finished my brown some areas of dark Mm -hmm. 
So I went over the, the strings, but if you notice, you can still see my drawing. So very important, try to uh, make sure that you can see your drawing. Uh, and here for the, the scroll of the violin, use the same brown. I'm gonna use it all over. Just make sure you can see the drawing because then we have to do some uh, darker lines as well there. The neck of the violin um, sometimes is a type of Let me see, I have an actual violin here. Let's see what is the actual color of the neck. Let's see here. It's black. Can be black. Yeah. So it's the same black. And here, the bridge is going to be a light brown. So it's going to be brown and white. And um, the neck of the violin is going to be, it is black. However, we're going to make it gray because it's the reflection of the light on top of it. Okay, let's make the neck of the violin. Uh, black mix with white. Don't use too much black. Usually the black is more stronger than white. So try to use a small uh, amount of black and more white. Is what I notice, usually white is not that strong unless the colors are extremely good quality. That means extremely expensive. Uh, so I'm using, yeah, I think you can't see much. Yeah, it is a gray there. <laughs> And it looks like a black, but it is a gray. Yeah. Okay, so the gray color I applied on the neck of the violin. I'm still not happy, it's still dark. I'm just going to make it slightly lighter. Because this part has as well some reflections of this uh, gray, uh, the reflections of light. I'm going to apply just a few dabs uh, of gray yeah, on the tail as well. Let's see if you can see. Trying to, yeah. Anyway, there are there, <laughs> but uh, it's difficult to see, to get the right shades from the camera. I forgot this part. It has to be black. Uh, is a part of the shadow. And the bridge, it has to be a light brown. So I'm going to use brown mixed with white. with, uh, just want to show you here where we have these extra lines, the, the swirly lines in the, in the scroll, just try to make them with uh, the brown. Yeah. yeah. So you just uh, outline more the shape yeah, of the violin. Remember after the artwork will be finished, use um, a ruler or freehand 
please feel free. <laughs> Use uh, freehand to draw your strings and to draw the lines in the background with the musical notes. I hope you guys uh, uh, creating created an amazing work. I hope you enjoyed. I always love drawing uh, violins. I don't know, probably because of the uh, shape, the wavy lines is like, um, is very relaxing. Uh, once again, <laughs> this is my son. <laughs> once again, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. I was taking his violin, so this is why he was really worried. What am I doing with his violin? <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Share with us your artworks. I can send you the feedback if you send me by email. Is info at arclassesgroup.com. I hope you enjoyed. Join us for the next sessions and uh, yeah, take care everyone. Keep painting, explore more. This is really nice. It's good for our mental health and it's good for, you know, to keep us, you know, uh, in peaceful mind all the time. I hope, yes, thank you guys. I'm gonna follow up with some emails for your feedbacks. <laughs> Thank you so much. See you guys next time. We have four more workshops. <laughs> All my children are here. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>